And Isaiah Kana Falefa said that they were caught by surprise because Blanco had been mostly a two pitch guy and he utilized the changeup just as much as the fastball breaker that he usually has. Yeah, but, and they okay, were but not okay, fine. Prepared. One time through? Second yes. time through, you're like, That's dude, this dude's throwing change ups. The Blue Jays yeah, a... lineup is Brutes Magoots. Yes. Oh, oh I wasn't good. I was about they to get pitch, to that. They but they cannot they, hit a lick. They got one hit. Dude, they got, they got no hit, and then they then Hater hung one slider, and then they got one hit. So they could have got no hit, shut out, one slider away from being shut out, and shut out in three games. 19-2 outscored, 35-9 out hit yeah. in that three game. The, and they won a game, which is even crazier. Next it's time you watch the Blue Jays, next time you watch the Blue Jays play, tell me if you think I'm wrong. The way I saw two of the three games, and I didn't, I didn't see the no hitter, so I saw the other two. They do not make an adjustment based on what is going on. It's almost like nobody's talking. Like, hey guys, like somebody stay up the middle on a pitch. Hey guys, this no. guy's throwing us more sinkers than he normally does. Make this adjust. Like they did, they did not make an adjustment from the first pitch to the end of the game. It looked like, and maybe I'm completely wrong. But it did not look like they were doing anything to to adjust. Whose fault is that? Because I'll bring up one other example. Players. I heard post game comments after they got no hit by Ronel Blanco, and Isaiah Kana Falefa said that they were caught by surprise because Blanco had been mostly a two pitch guy, and he utilized the changeup just as much as but, the fastball breaker that he usually has. Yeah, but, and they okay, were but okay, prepared. fine. One time through. Second yes. time through, you're like, That's dude, this I'm dude's throwing changeups. That's what I'm saying. I'm gonna look for a changeup. At some point, Vlad Guerrero struck out three times and, and hit a weak ground ball his fourth time. All on changeups. Are you not in the dugout after the first time through? Like, yeah. hey guys, he's not that good, or he's on like he is on right now. Yeah, but he's someone sit on change a changeup. I'd be in the dugout, but like, motherfuckers, someone hit a changeup. Like, it was a nasty changeup, but, but still. still. At some point you think, like, man, I'm gonna look for a changeup. That's what I'm saying. It looks like it looks like they're not making an adjustment as a team. People are going to blame the hitting coach. Stop. Like, once the game starts, we're getting after it. And we're getting after it as these nine guys. We're going to grind this pitcher down until he's out of the game. We might not score any runs, but we're going to grind him down. And we're going to hit balls hard at different parts of the ballpark based on what he's throwing us. And it just looked like... They were like, oh, no way that just happened. I'll never forget, beginning of the season in 2016, I question it when I'm saying I never forget, but Chris Bassett was pitching for Oakland, and I was on the Astros. And this dude was throwing, I think it was Bassett. Now, I'm, now my memory's leaving me. Whoever it was, the scatter report said he was 90 to 94. The whole first three innings he was 94 to 97 with less sync than he had before and so we were like guys were like i wasn't in the game but guys were like the scoreboard is right his velocity is three miles an hour harder than what it was and the guy or what we thought it was from the scatter report now you got to make the adjustment guys had to make the adjustment and it was it, that's what happens in the big leagues you might face ronell you know, and he's going to throw you more changeups. Talk to each other. What's he throwing you? What was that pitch? I think it was a changeup, but I, I don't really care. It doesn't matter. It just seemed like but they didn't make kind of the same old Blue Jays. Every Maybe. year we like hype them up to where their offense is going to be so I did. good. Me too. I picked them to make the playoffs. But did I? No, I didn't. I did. I hyped um, up their offense. I hyped. I, you're a homer. Um, <laughs> their pitching is really good. Uh, but every year we're like, man, Vlad's going to have a great year. Biggio, uh, Bichette, George Springer, right? Varsho, Alejandro Kirk, Matt Chapman last year. Here we go. They have this great offense, and then they go, Pfft, and they don't score any runs. Is I that, mean, they can pitch. Yeah. I mean, they can really pitch. Is there a core problem? Because this year it was, here comes Justin Turner. They, were, they needed more, of a, more adults in the room. He's going to be that guy that's like, yo, let's talk adjustments right now. What the heck's going on? Let's go all go over this. Like the, you know, they call them like cage guys. <laughs> yes. 
You want to try and hundred percent? And I think uh, I thought he was Danny one Martinez, of the good Cage guy, right? So JT though, again, it's a week. It's a week of baseball. It's a week, but this is it, it, it. Excuse me. It's different when it's a week, but it's also been a thing. How many runs they scored in the playoffs last year? Hmm. One. Mm-hmm. Did they score right? one? I thought it was yeah. zero. No, I think oh, they, they scored. I thought they scored one. Either way, not enough. Whatever it was, it wasn't enough to win a game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And offense, the lot. I mean, if you ask a Blue Jays fan, if you ask Jays fans, they're going to say we haven't hit for a couple of years now. With what you look at on paper and say, man. So then it goes to, and I, I always, I hate saying this, but then it goes to. You mentioned it's not the hitting coach's fault. I know it's play, it's always the player's fault. Okay, let me say this, but. And as a player that's been, when a hitting coach has been fired, when a manager has been fired, everything, I've been in all of it. It always comes back to the players, okay? But sometimes team officials look at it and say, you know, is it the manager? Is it the hitting coach? Is it the this guy? Is it the bench coach? Is it, you know, yeah. And I'm not calling for any of that, but that's how it goes. They're like, okay, well, we're not hitting. We've had the same hitting coach for three years now. It's not working. Let's try somebody new. And they call up the minor league guy. That sucks. Because it's not his fault. It ultimately always file, falls on the players. Can't fire the players. That's the reality. Yes, you can. Well, you can. Yes, you can. You can. You ain't firing right. Bo Bichette and Vladimir no. Guerrero. No, you when... trade them. Yeah. But are they the problem or is I, it the rest? Know. Like, do I, they I not know. have a supporting cast? Because, I mean. But you look at, okay, so they go Springer, Bichette, Vlad. That's three. Pretty good at the top, right? Then you throw Kiermaier had a great year for him. Alejandro Kirk's been an all-star. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Biggio's, I think Biggio's off to a better start than they thought. Varsho, since he's been traded, hasn't been very good. So that's one. But I mean, his values and his defense so far, I mean, he's been, I, I've been yeah, a huge Dalton Varsho fan. But to me, that team relies on two superstars. Bo Bichette had a good year last year. Vlad did not. I, I thought this was going to be a huge year. Vlad doesn't have an extension yet. He's going to want it. This is when he grows up and becomes a superstar with Bo at the same at the same time. I know. MVP year, Shohei, Shohei took it from him. He could have been MVP that year. But this is – both of those guys in one lineup, to me, is why I picked them for the playoffs. Even, even outside of their pitching staff. I don't think their pitching staff is going to have quite the year they did last year because they were awesome. But to me, both of those guys, both of those guys need to be hot in this lineup. And this series, it did not translate. You're, you're saying you need them, you need Vlad to be a 150 OPS plus or more guy. And you want Bo to be 135 or more. Because yep. that, that might be the difference. Because I'm looking at last year's team, right? I'm j- just go off, say OPS plus for now. Kirk was a little below average. They said, oh, he wasn't as good as the year before. Okay, but catcher it's not like he was the most hyped prospect ever he's, he's a good player he's a league average hitter with right some contact not a ton of pop he had eight homers okay vladdy yeah he was 117 wit was 94 Bo was 123 chapman 108 varsho 85 kiermeyer 104 springer 102 obviously they want more there belt 136 schneider was great obviously in a short stint 175 and even Danny Jansen had a good year when he was playing at 115. So you you look and you're like it wasn't there weren't a lot of bad hitters so a lot of average didn't work together but then mid. okay so let's go to this year. I'm looking at their stats right now, right? Okay. Justin Turner hitting 318. Okay. Fly Guerrero 208. Varsho 143, Springer 120, Kirk 095. Bichette, 150, 3 for 20. No homers. I mean, it, it's like Springer, who's supposed to, he's hitting 120, three for 25, two homers, two RBIs. No wall, or, you know, it's like, okay, let's see, who else? Kiermeyer. Kiermeyer's hitting, he's one for 18, 056. It's just Turner, really. Turner's I mean, Turner's the only side. one hitting. Yeah. I mean, Guerrero, 208. That's not Vlad Guerrero. He's, huh? Watch their at bats. Just watch. No, I'm just saying five for 24, one homer, one RBI through. How many games they played? Seven games? Six games? Seven games? Whatever it is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, six or seven. Six or seven. I mean, I mean, seven. That, it, it, that's. 
I, I don't know. I'm just saying, like, they're not performing the way they should perform, that we expect them to perform because they're better players than this. I know it's only been a week, but let them get up in Toronto, get into that Rogers Center. The roof will be closed. They'll be hitting dingers. Your point is valid, though, because we're doing a baseball show every day. We are going to overreact and underreact sometimes. But what AJ's saying is this is, didn't just start. This has been a problem for a minute. The, you know what they talk about in Houston? They're like, we just had a shitty homestand, even though we didn't play that bad. They're like, the only thing that concerns us is we've had this weird home winning percentage, right? It mm-hmm. was a problem all of last year. So they're like, that's what we're overreacting about. Not because it's a week of games, but because it's a trend being carried over for now. I think that's fair. All right. But that's what he said. Yeah, that's what he said. That's what he said. <laughs> that's what he said. That's what he said. You might have to get Brian Bumgarner to help us out with that. We, we can ask him. Yeah. I feel like that is tailor made for him to oh, get into the show every day, right? Kevin in there would be a classic. So this is our time to talk about the Yankees. They are victorious again yesterday over the Diamondbacks, a 6-1 and one road trip to start the year. And Tori Labello, manager of the Diamondbacks, regrets Judge getting a knock in extras. I'm kicking myself for that right now. Um, yes, of course. Of course. Um, you know, you don't want to give up the second run, whether it's two or three runs. It doesn't matter in extra innings. So... Yeah, I felt like we were going to... Hey, everybody. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content. We're back here every weekday, all year long, so do not miss an episode. The videos are coming in all day. Here's another video you might enjoy. Baseball the way it should be covered.